Is this how it goes? I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to thank you very much and remind everybody to fill out your audience award ballots because that's really important. If you know people who want to see this film, you, people you know who would dig it, plays again next weekend, closes out the festival near and dear to my heart. I love this film. And uh, I just want to say that it, it was really great, I was just saying this, but to um, actually see it on a big screen. I mean, I've seen this on a screener, you know, my, my TV. And part of my job is imagining it. You know how it's going to work, and I think it's a brilliant film. And uh, thanks, thanks for letting us do it. Did you guys like it? <laughs> did anyone, did anyone who's not friends and family like it? <laughs> there you go. There's one. What do you guys think? Um, okay, I'll start this off. Uh, it's pretty daring. Um, what you did is really dangerous because you took really a. Uh, Kind of a traditional story, you know? Romeo and Juliet. Oh, you guys, come on down. And it's very long, and Rachel Bella, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us. And then, I don't think we've met. Very, very nice to meet you. Um, thanks, guys, for coming. And uh, I'm just going like, to let you do this, because you're the professional. Um, first of all, it's very daring. What you did was you took a kind of a traditional Romeo and Juliet, natural born killers, true romance kind of thing. A shot from a Blair Witch video perspective. That's a really daring experiment. Why did you do it that way? Uh, you had a really good solid story. I mean, I kind of think it's Apocalypse Now um, with Colonel Curtis's Uncle Rodney. Um, and that's what I really like about it. Uncle Rodney scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Where is that coming from? Yeah, where is he? Yeah, yeah where is Whitley Sadler? He had a prior commitment. He really wanted to be here. Okay. Uh, his name's William Sadler. He's a brilliant, brilliant actor. You probably remember him from movies like Shawshank Redemption, uh, The Green Mile, Kinsey, a little known movie called uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, where he played. Yeah! That's, he actually played death in that movie. And it's the only good thing about that movie, is death. Oh, I think it's good, but that's okay. Okay, well that's, you know, he's pretty awesome, his death, I'll say that for sure. Anyway, uh, so that's William said. So the question is, um, why, why did you take the experiment? Rather than simply uh, telling the, the story in a more traditional fashion, because you had the story there, you know, the characters there, you like the characters, um, I like the ending, the film, you know, is you take, Familiar elements and mix them in a really new and interesting way. And, but that's a really great decision. Why did you decide to do that? We wanted to make a film where we could do things ourselves. Uh, we originally planned to shoot a lot of the movies ourselves. Um, I consider myself a decent shooter. Then we hired Ben Cuffrin, who could shoot better than I could. It was really annoying at first, but uh, <laughs> he made our film look absolutely fantastic. Um, can't say enough about Ben's contribution to the film. Eddie and Rachel shot a lot of it, but uh, I guess to answer your question, you know, we, we had a bad experience with a producer, and we said, F this, we're going to make our own movie. You can say fuck, it's alright. Fuck this, <laughs> we're going to make our own movie, and we said, okay, what do we got? We got Kentucky, we have a camera, uh, we have this idea, so let's write to our location. So I knew I could get uh, some crazy people to come to like a meth farm. I knew that I could count on my friends and family. You should have signed Right. Central America. Central yeah. And I knew I could count on my friends and family to come out and support us. So we sort of wrote around what we knew we could absolutely have. And then coincidentally, the script got off to Edward Furlong here. Eddie Furlong. Maybe we should uh, find out what attracted you to the script. How did you find it? Like, how did it come to you? Uh, basically, it just kind of came through, um, my lawyer, who was, like, friends with, uh, somebody... Yeah, I mean, it's really boring, but, um, I mean, basically, uh, you know, what attracted me to the script, uh, I always, like, think of the first thing that got me when I, like, read the script, and, um, it's really rare that I, like, crack up when I read something, but, um, I just had to be involved in anything that, like, had some guy's dad getting rained. <laughs> I, I think I think the term now is pegged. Is that right? <laughs> but uh, and I was like, oh my god, this is a normal movie. It's good. Um, and, 
and uh, I met these guys, and uh, and the whole movie sort of like, uh, and I, I don't know, I just was really intrigued by the idea. I mean, I remember when I first read the script, I was like, holy shit, how are we gonna like, they really wanna make a movie that's like a home movie. And uh, it's kind of a scary idea when I think of my home movies. But, um, you know, we had Ben, and uh, you know, he did a great job with the cinematography, and uh, you know, it's really weird when you don't have like editing. You don't, you know, a lot of those things we did were like, I mean, with that William Sadler speech. That's like, yeah, it's like six minutes long. It's like six minutes long. It's just him talking, and there's no edits, and uh, it's pretty rare. So, in a way, it's kind of like doing a play. And um, you know, I mean, I'm stoked. This was like the first time I actually saw it on big screen and like saw it finished. It rocked. Well, you know, I'm. The question is, did you like it? Did you like it? Did it deliver? I, you know, I love it. You know, it's pretty hard. Like, anytime I come on screen, I just kind of sit there and bite my nail. And, like, you know, when she's on screen, I'm happy. I'm just like, oh. It's a nice movie. Uh, and uh, I understand you're engaged now. Did you meet on the set? Uh, we. We're, we, we're going out, we're actually like, yeah, you know, as cheesy as it sounds. Like, it's oh, romantic, oh, man, it's Valentine's Day Festival. Yeah, it's true. Aww. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, what do you guys do next? Oh, Eddie, uh, what's your next project, Rachel? What are you, what are you doing? I'm taking a year off, actually. Really, what are you gonna do, taking a year off? Cool, why? Just to focus on my, the rest of my life, not my career. Excellent. That's a rare thing to hear. I know. Sounds rare. Hey, what are you doing? Um, I'm, uh, I'm actually just, uh, like, actually, I'm just taking it easy, too. I, like, this last couple of years have been really busy. So uh, I've just been enjoying the holidays, hanging out with the woman. Yay. And I got the Xbox 360, so... <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. Oh, because they're light. Um, any... Okay, questions from the audience. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm right here. What other movies were you in? What other movies were you in? Uh... In general, or lately? Yeah, you look like John Connor. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, that's not me, man. That's like, uh, that's the like, comment was, you, you look a lot like, like John Connor from Terminator 2. <laughs> was that little whiny bratty kid on the bike? God, what a crappy actor that was. Yeah. Uh, Rachel was in the yeah, No, actually, no, I am. I was in Terminator 2. That was, uh, that was my first movie. Was it? Yeah. American History X. I can't see that, I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, it's me right here. Okay, cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was in American History X. Becker. Becker. John Waters. <laughs> Something tell me, tells me this is more of a Becker crowd than a Terminator 2 crowd. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Um, yeah, one of, one of the most effective shots, obviously, was that last shot. After all the handheld, where everybody was either moving or the camera was moving, and for that one frame of where everything stopped. Do you guys realize how powerful it's going to be when you see it up here on the big screen now? You're talking about the sort of the death stare at the end? Yeah, sure. But I mean, that's the only time nobody was moving and the camera wasn't moving in the whole movie. And it was, you know, fantastic, but did you realize just how powerful it would be? I, I don't think that you really, I mean, you hope that something's going to work the way you envision it. And, uh, and when, you, when you execute your script, you also, we shot a number of different ways to possibly end the movie. Because we had the actors there and we weren't going to be, you know, we had no money to do reshoots or anything crazy like that. So we went in a number of directions and that, that was the one that really brought it home. And we, I think we, we found that in the edit. I mean, you hope that your vision is going to come out working out really well. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're really proud. Yeah, we didn't know how effective anything would be because so many people told us we couldn't do a movie in all master shots. So it's just rewarding that we made the movie that we set out to make. And so many people would, would say to us, we would have people that would interview, they say, okay, so let me get this straight. Eddie's going to memorize seven pages of dialogue. It's like, 
And put pickles on his nipples. That's right. That's right. Yes, he is. Like, well, what if he messes he up? What are you, what are you going to do? Sexy. <laughs> Were those really hot? What? Were those really hot, those pickles? No, they weren't. Good yeah. job. Just made me hot. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, this is one thing, that, one thing I want to share. It, it, it really, this is kind of an anti-Hollywood movie because we wrote the script and John and I were like, yeah, we're going to do it like this and do it like this. And everyone was like, no, you're not. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You can't have a scene in a movie where the camera's on the floor of a car for five minutes. You know, and you're just looking at a shoe. You just, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, and it turned out to work, so, you know, that was really cool. Yeah, it does work. Uh, yeah, yeah, in front here? Sure. Sure. Um, I noticed some things in terms of the script that are, have a lot in common with, like, plays like David and Lisa, or, or more obviously, like, Heather's or something like that. Um, did it occur to you? I mean, what I, what I liked about this film is that it, it ended much more generously. And your character in particular. Um, Are you talking about sort of I'm the, talking about the cross arms? Every Furlong's character basically yeah. saying, you can go. In other movies where you see, basically it's like the male character or the whatever, the psychotic person holds on to the, the helper or whatever. Like, no, I'm going to make you stay with me through this whole thing. Right. And your character says all through the, the whole end of the movie, you know, it's going to be okay, you can go, you can go. And your character refuses to go. And that made it kind of, that to me made it different. And it didn't seem much more generous characteristically way to yeah, they, they essentially, you think of that? they switch roles. Judy becomes Jimmy, and then Jimmy becomes responsible. And, yeah. uh, in a weird way, it's kind of like Frankenstein. Frankenstein creates a monster, and the monster, you know, does him in. But it's a, but it's a love story. So, um, yeah. I mean, but it's a love story that actually has love in it. Yeah, I, I, I. Yeah. Well, I can't say enough how um, how lucky we were to find these two brilliant actors, and um, uh, when. When I first found out, it was actually proposed to me by um, my friend Amy Angelostro, who's one of the co-producers of the film, because we didn't know who we could cast with no money at all, and we're just like, well, you know, who do we know? Do we, you know, can we, can we, we can't do it the Hollywood way with the agents and the managers. They don't want their actors working on a movie that's cheap, so uh, with unknown directors. So how, what do we, we got to find somebody we know and get them the script and make them read it and get them to fall in love with it, and Amy suggested Edward Furlong, which was a very uh, interesting direction to take us because we originally wrote the character, the Jimmy character was 18. And uh, we thought, well, uh, Eddie's not a child actor anymore, he's an adult, and um, I don't know. So we rewrote the script for Eddie because we found out he was actually interested in making our movie, which was a complete shock to us because, you know, we, we, I mean, I told John on the phone, I called him, I said, Ed Furlong wants to be in our movie. He's like, no, he doesn't. You are so full of shit. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I'm like, no, actually, Amy says he, want, he really likes the script and he wants to be in the movie. All right, I'll see it when I believe it. I believe it when I see it. Okay. Yeah. But no, it was true. Not with Eddie and he, you know, he, he actually had accidentally misunderstood that we might be cutting the dildo scene from the film. And he nearly attacked us at a sushi bar. He left, yeah. Gonna... He left out. It was just, no, you can't! <laughs> and we knew he, he really understood what we were doing at that point. <laughs> so from, so from ha having an idea of who you wanted to get the script, how did you actually manage to get the script in this house? You're like, oh yeah, this person might be good to... I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand. How did you manage to actually get the script to him after... Well, Amy, Amy knew his, his attorney, okay. and that's why she suggested him. She said, I met, I met Eddie at a party six months ago. This is totally his sense of humor. He will love this script. And I'm like, okay, sure, Amy, here you go. Paper's cheap. And you <laughs> hear that. Send it off. <laughs> you hear that so many times living in Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm going to get the script to uh, Eddie Furlong. I think it's his sensibility. And I thought, well, why not Tom Cruise? Why not Brad Pitt then? Let's just... <laughs> While, we, while, while, while we're dreaming here, let's get it to everyone. Who knew? Yeah, question here. Um, I wanted to ask the actors how how much of the script was uh, improvised dialogue or something, 
and also uh, how did both of you go about developing these characters? If you could just talk a little bit about it. Okay. The question is how did uh, they actually develop the characters and how much of it was in the script and how much of it comes from you guys improvising? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, well, very little of it actually was improvised, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I guess later on we improvised more because we were more comfortable and we knew each other more, but it was small things, like, uh, he yelled at those girls about the hairy pussy thing. That was improvised. <laughs> Just little things like that. That's true. Yeah. The way that I can never write something so brilliant as that. Uh, things like that. Um, but most of it wasn't improvised. And the hair, when he's shaving his, when I'm shaving his head, that's mostly improvised because he was nervous, so he's putting hair yeah, back the on the head. only line, the only line, and I would give John credit for this one, the only line in, in that head shaving scene, which I know is in the script, was the uh, male pattern baldness guy line. Yeah. Which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And we had to make sure that she shaved his head. Like that. In the right, you know. She's got to do it right, because if she starts on the side, it blows the gag. <laughs> and we couldn't really get a second take on that one. Yeah. Um, and I guess the character thing, wait, what was the question? Just character How did it develop? Like, develop? Yeah, how did you get? Well, I guess that happens like the longer you're filming. How long did you film? Um, 15, 15 days, days, so. Not it that developed, long. It developed <laughs> every day. That's how they developed. It's a lot of hours every day. Actually, you know, I, I, I want to say this. Um, we spent a lot of time together, the four of us. I mean, we were like a little family. Um, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the things were, because we didn't have tons of rehearsal time or anything like that. We had like a couple days to rehearse and that was it. And a lot of it came from just after hours, we still wanted to all hang out. And we just, you know, oh, by the way, you know, tomorrow we're doing the scene where something happens, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, we, I mean, we sort of developed the characters like back and forth together just by hanging out, uh, you know, after afterwards in the hotel room. Yeah, like I, I also think like like when you have a good script too, is there's a really good blueprint there for the character, and um, I don't know. I think a lot of the actors that say, "Oh, I had this, I did this, and I did that," are just lying or something. Because actually, I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, uh, I pretty much like showed up there and uh, you know I had uh, I, you know I, th I think like um, you just for me at least with this you know uh, it was really about just being as real with this scene and the emotions as I possibly could be and then as like we filmed the f movie it just sort of like the pieces come together and you're like oh my god it's turning into a performance turning into a character you know that's yeah. And it, you know, and it, it, it didn't hurt that these two were actually really falling in love on the set. I mean, it, it, it really didn't hurt. It's, I mean, I'm yeah. sincere about that. They really did. And I think John and I fell in love with them as people, too, on the set. We really did. See, the character development with Eddie, Eddie refuses to, to go all out until he actually, you say, action. So we rehearsed, and Eddie said before, he said, look, I don't bring it when we rehearse. So we'd never seen him act, you know, <laughs> and so we said action. I mean, we saw in other movies. <laughs> yeah, we were a little nervous at first when he was like kind of going at half speed during the uh, rehearsals. But uh, the second we started rolling on the very first one, it was like, wow, oh my God. Thank God. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was really amazing. It really was. We got time for like one more. One good solid question. Yes. Uh, solid question. Oh well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you adapt the character names for the Ramones song with that being Judy? Jack and Judy? Yeah. No, it's, it's Jimmy and Judy. Did you adapt the question is, do we did we adapt the names from the Ramones tune Jackie and Judy? It's Jimmy and Judy. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just fucking with you. No, no, yeah, no, we did not. But okay. Good bad call. question behind you. You have a solid. One. What was the actual budget? What was the actual budget? The, uh, the truth is, not enough. <laughs> and that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, we're still spending money. Yeah? Never ends. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you Bye, very guys. much. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for letting us share.